we got I'm here to talk about uh, creating a geocoded town. Um, John and I have been involved in a number of projects, and we've been helping with other projects. Um, it's part of a, a project a thing that we call GLAM, which stands for it's an Australian period. It stands for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. So it's it's about linking out to the cultural sector. Um, but we just tell you who we are. Um, John Cummings is a guy who's done uh, Monmouth, covering it all over in geocoded stuff. Uh, he's currently working at the uh, Science Museum and the Natural History Museum. Yeah. Um, and he's also worked with me current in uh, last year in Gibraltar, doing what, we've, what we're going to tell you about in Gibraltar. So we're just going to sort of do a duet, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> um, uh, Roger Bankin uh, was chair of Wikimedia UK for a while, yep. um, works a lot with Wikipedia, um, worked on Monmouthpedia and Gibraltarpedia with me and does other cool things as well. I uh, came up with uh, something called QRpedia, along with some other people, um, which is basically, we'll talk about it in a second, you'll find out. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. So the first thing I thought to tell you about is uh, what is Wikipedia. Uh, hands up though, all those people, I'm not going to ask who's used Wikipedia because I don't believe there's anybody in the room. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Who has edited Wikipedia? One person. Who knew well, that, who knew <laughs> that, who has ever seen an error in Wikipedia? Who failed to correct it? Right. <laughs> So message received, guys. If you see the errors, correct them. That's the reason why the, the, the product gets better, is because people see the errors and they fix them, uh, rather than just talk about the fact that there is an error. Um, it's editable by everyone. It's available in 270 languages, which is some of the things we, we've been trying to exploit, is the fact that this is available so easily in so many different languages. Um, it's the sixth most, visited, sixth most visited website. There are about 550 million people every month who go and access Wikipedia. So if you get something on Wikipedia, even if it's the most obscure subject, for instance, I looked up today that this place where we are built is built on the old Lenten Priory. There is an article about two pages long about Lenten Priory. And the interesting fact is you've heard of Robin Hood. If he ever existed, he took on the Sheriff of Nottingham, whose name was Mark, Philip Mark, and he, was, he paid for this, the, the priory to be built and to preserve his, his memory forever. So we're actually at the place where the Sheriff of Nottingham still lives. His body is somewhere underneath our feet. Um, Wikipedia is funded by donations and run by a charity, the Wikimedia Foundation. sums it up. This is the easiest summation that I can come up with. Uh, this is uh, said by Jimmy Wales, who was one of the co-founders of Wikipedia. Um, he's kind of, his relationship to Wikipedia is like the queen. He kind of had, he's like a um, press, people like him, and he's a, like a, I've met him a couple of times, he's a lovely guy. He's kind of uh, a sp spiritual yes. head or something. I'm not quite sure how to explain it. Uh, imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum total of human knowledge. That's what we're doing. And I think we're kind of part way along, really. I think we're doing okay. Yes. Um, uh, this is the Wikimedia Foundation there in San Francisco. Um, kind of to contrast this with someone like Google, which are, uh, that we're not as uh, visitors as Google, but, you know, not bad. Um, Google have... 53,000 employees last time I checked. Uh, the Wikimedia Foundation has 110-ish. And everything else is done by volunteers, which is pretty amazing, really. Um, so we've kind of talked about this a bit already. Um, everyone can write Wikipedia, please do. Um, 100,000 regular contributors. Some languages very big, like English. Some languages are much smaller, like Welsh. I know the Hawaiian Wikipedia is two guys in Hawaii. Um, so editors kind of, they can edit, but they also set the policy, and it's, it's very consensus-driven. Uh, they're the ones who decided to turn off Wikipedia for a day a few years ago. You might remember that it went dark for a day to um, protest the um, 
the copyright laws in America, uh, the Russian Wikipedia did it a few weeks afterwards, the Russian uh, copyright laws that actually got passed. Um, and I really like this. Wikipedia doesn't work in theory, only in practice. Um, yeah. Because you hear lots of people saying, it, it won't work, I know, it's full of errors. No, it isn't, actually. Um, so, a uh, number of people doing it times 200. That's a nice visual representation without using a picture of whales. Um, uh, what is a QRPD code? Um, these QRPD codes are over here. We have them on these various objects. You can kind of pass them around if you like. Um, they're a bit... They are based on a QR code, which presumably everybody has ever seen. The difference is that the, when you click on the QR code, it senses the language of your phone, and it takes you to that language. So here we've got these things here in, um, in English and in Zulu, and you can click on it, and if your phone is set up into Zulu, it'll give you the information in Zulu. Or if you're Hawaiian, it doesn't translate uses the fact that we have got Hawaiian editors, it uses the fact that we've got Israeli editors, and they create the articles, so you might actually be seeing it, a different version that's more about, it would it possibly, if you looked it up in Russian, it would actually tell you where Nottingham is in the UK, where maybe in English it wouldn't bother to tell you. You kind of go, you know where Nottingham is. It's kind of a, a well-known place to people who speak English. Um, so... Uh, this is me putting it up in Derby Museum two and a half years ago. So if you go around Derby Museum and you've got your phone set up in Esperanto or Latin or Anglo-Saxon, it'll talk to you because there are people who, t who actually do create Wikipedias in Anglo-Saxon and Latin. Um, and we had, a, um, we had people from all the way around the world concentrating on Derby Museum because we wanted to create one place in the world where it looked like Wikipedia was finished if you know what I mean. Um, and here is uh, our, the Queen <laughs> um, in Indianapolis trying this idea out. It was rapidly taken up by other glams around the world. Uh, this is the Children's Museum in Indianapolis using this idea. And um, I gave a talk in uh, Bristol with another guy, a director of Wikimedia UK, and we said that we wanted to do Bristol Museum Bristol Museum are still thinking about it. Um, but some guy at the back said, why don't you do a whole town? Um, yeah, I didn't really understand how Wikipedia worked at that point. I thought that it was kind of some centralised organisation. Um, and I met with Steve, the other guy who did the talk after and said, that was great, you could do it for a whole town. I know a really good one. And he said, oh, well, I bet, why don't you try? Uh, so I did. Um, <laughs> And that's the website, you can go to it. It's basically just a redirect to a Wikipedia project page. Um, so I'm going to talk for about five seconds about Star Trek. Um, you can't see because the lights are on, but basically this is that. This, all modern technology companies are just trying to copy Star Trek. But the thing that I, I used to watch Star Trek as a child, like get in and six o'clock Star Trek was on, and they had these, tricorders. We've also got them now. <laughs> And it's this kind of, these technological kind of, these nice little boxes that connect you with information where you want it. You kind of, you, you're in front of a thing, you basically want one of these. You basically want a box and you point it at something and it goes wiggly wing and then it tells you what that thing is. This is kind of, I think there's lots of different ways of getting around that problem. I think geolocation is part of it. I think these are part of it. There's, a, there's other things as well. Uh, so Monmouth is where I grew up. It's a small town in South Wales. Uh, it has 8,877 inhabitants currently. Um, it's there. Um, so there's two parts of this project, really. There's um, creating the content, and there's also getting it to people the places they want. Um, so we started off by running a, kind of a, a, a meeting with the council in the site hall in the middle of town. Um, and kind of um, encouraging local community groups to uh, what's the word? to get involved, to kind of edit uh, and improve articles um, about Wikipedia. Um, this is what we ended up with. We ended up with 550 new articles in 29 languages, improved the existing ones as well, about 1,000 new images. Um, we ended up with about half a million more page views a year about Monmouth, um, which is nice. Um, 
And that's kind of the thing with Wikipedia is it's where most people look for information most of the time. And if uh, if you speak a language other than English, it's actually probably one of your only information sources about places in Britain a lot of the time because we're British, we don't really speak a lot of languages most of the time. Um, so uh, this is this is me showing someone in uh, the local museum, and we're just using one of these, but a slightly older version. So we just set up codes around the town, um, as you can see here, um, and we had them in the museums and stuff. And it's just a nice way of getting information to people where they are. Um, this was a major problem, actually. Um, not, not we have electricity in South Wales. <laughs> um, <laughs> connection. <laughs> connection, like, okay, so there's GPS signal, but through the, the, the like data signal in Monmouth is just, uh, doesn't work, basically. It's, it's kind of, a, everything's got thick walls, and, you know, we're a small town, so the mobile providers don't really put up a lot of mass. Um, so they put Wi-Fi in throughout the whole town, which is wonderful, and it basically means completely free access to this information which is really great. It's quite a large investment for a town to make, but actually it's a really kind of, I think it's a lovely thing to be able to do. But they justified it because Wikipedia were in town. Uh, so we've got these all around the town. Uh, we've got real ones here. Uh, they're all over. This is a charity that happens to do one of it does, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It does uh, education about beekeeping in Africa um, as kind of a sustainable farming. Uh, we also put them in the museum. It's a small one there. So you can find out about the Monmouth CAC. Uh, we also did like nice things with lots of codes in, in kind of in the museum as a way of like um, making sort of games around it and stuff. Do you want to press the button? Mm -hmm. Sorry, one. Uh, we also had them on kind of shops to give people information about the professions and the goods that the shops sell. Not about the businesses themselves, although I kept getting people saying they'd give me free dinner if I put their business mm -hmm. on Wikipedia. Um, and then we had, yeah, so basically these ones as well, which were roughly the same, but there was an existing kind of, you know those big blue plaques? Um, kind of these were coded, colour-coded for those blue plaques, so that's the Shire Hall, which is the building that you saw earlier. Um, do you want to And we got a local person to make them. Um, there's two sorts here. There's one from Monmouth and one from, uh, where is that from? Johannesburg. Johannesburg. I wasn't sure whether it was the Fremantle ones or not. So we actually shipped them all the way from Rumbay uh, to South Africa, which was ridiculous. But um, yeah, so, uh, so we used a local person to make them who runs a uh, sort of community arts and crafts um, project. Um, so this is the link to what we hear for the conference. <laughs> so this is OpenStreetMap uh, with the geocoded articles on. This is something that Wikipedia does quite well because it geocodes articles that kind of have a place. Um, it's a bit messy when you get like people with geocodes on and stuff. But, um, so I'd really love lots of places to look like this, to be able to go around a town or a pla the place that you are and know kind of about the history and also about um, uh, kind of the environment around you. And I think that, that you need to use lots of different things and you see kind of a geolocation but also these plaques and then how do you do it for like the natural world as well it's something that I'm working at the Natural History Museum on at the moment um, but yeah it, this is kind of as we just said before it's how would Wikipedia look when it's kind of five or ten years in the future and kind of concentrate on something and see what what would happen um, if you have a phone or something afterwards please uh, look for this video, it's bonkers. It's a, a Taiwanese news company covering the project I did. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's, um, look for NMT Monmouthpedia on YouTube, it's fantastic. They did a three minute animation for us, wonderful. Um, okay. Yep. Do you want to talk about this? Yes, I will do. So um, after we'd finished Monmouth, we got invited to go to talk to the Gibraltar government. And the Gibraltar government went into partnership with us, and we had to go at trying to create the world's first Wikipedia city. Um, this, is the, um, this is the cave where the last Neanderthals lived in Europe. 
Um, so we went round there. Uh, this is the guy who's uh, Professor Clive Finlayson, who's the head of culture in Gibraltar. Um, he gave us full access to the whole of um, Gibraltar. We've written uh, uh, just over, I say, we, we, the community have written just over a thousand articles about Gibraltar. So for this, is, Gibraltar is a very small place. It's only got 30,000 people actually live there. Uh, and they've got a thousand articles. Basically, if you walk around and go, I wonder what that is, there's an article about it. Um, every gun, every fortification, every ca it's all got something written already about it. Um, so we had uh, 1,014. We load up, loaded up um, 3,000 free images. Um, this is showing the impact on the world. So we're actually looking at the number of languages that you can use to access the Gibraltar um, articles because they're written in different so India actually scores highest because we actually had lots of articles in English and which is one of the languages that you speak in India and also lots of um, in Hindi as well so you can actually wander around um, Gibraltar and access the the culture in Hindi um, which is this is wonderful for Wikipedia because one of the things that Wikipedia is trying to do is to actually increase our global impact because we're fairly good in the UK, we're fairly good in, in, in uh, France and Germany and places in, um, um, in the first world. But if you actually go to the global south, we haven't actually managed to do very much. And we managed to persuade the Gibraltar government that they would not only do Gibraltar, but we would spread out into Spain and we'd spread out into the, the, the north of Africa as well and actually not actually go, we'll stop at the, the national borders, we'll, we'll try and do the whole of the area around Gibraltar. Um, and this is showing here the breakdown of the languages, which um, as a pretty much a monoglot, I find this amazing, the fact that we've actually got this kind of um, access to culture for um, people in Portugal and people in Occitan and Dutch and French and Catalan and all kinds of interesting languages. Um, we gather statistics on the uh, QRPD codes that are, um, uh, when they're clicked on. Uh, we can tell who's been accessing them, what kind of codes they, they, they are accessing them with. Um, the actual usage of the QR codes is not amazing. What is actually amazing is the fact you've actually got that access, that level of cultural data available to you. So if you're, for instance, looking up the, com the access of, to one of those guns on Wikipedia, you can actually see it's being accessed four or five times a day. Um, and for the more powerful things like um, Gibraltar, it's, we're getting a lot of access. Um, the idea has been picked up. Um, it's a free idea, so people are picking it up. With the people in South Africa have, have um, taken this idea of doing a wiki town. They're doing it around Soweto. Um, they've got Gandhi's house done. Um, have I got a picture of it? No, go forward. There's Gandhi's house. I can't believe we've actually got something stuck on the side of um, Mahatma Gandhi's house in uh, Johannesburg and they're talking about doing um, Desmond Tutu's house and Nelson Mandela's house. So it's, it's wonderful to have that kind of impact on an organisation. Um, and I'm actually finding out myself things I didn't know, like this is a map, the, the yellow bit in the middle is Johannesburg and that's where they speak English. The other colours are where the first language isn't English and actually, the, you think of South Africa as an English-speaking nation. Mostly, it isn't. It's got other languages that they speak um, around South Africa. So actually having these kind of access is wonderful. Um, and we've gone all the way around to Fremantle. This is um, a view of... Fremantle we, Harbour? Yeah, we've not been ourselves. No, no, we haven't been. No, no, they didn't send us any plane tickets. Um, but it's nice to be able to see the fact that you've got um, these QRPD codes being used here. Um, and again, they've got the access in, in different languages. Um, and because of the... the, the it's, it's, it's links very much to your talk. You're, you're actually saying, can we use GIS? And we're coming down from the top level and going, yes, we can. And we're actually pulling that stuff up. And, and these things are geocoded, etc. And we're improving the data. Um, our final slide, and it's actually the point of our talk, is um, we've come here because we are 
mostly we talk to people Wikipedians. We mostly don't talk to GIS people. You are GIS people. We're wondering, Wikitowns are a great way of creating geotagged information. It's a wonderful way of inspiring people to actually engage with their own culture, engage with their information, engage with the fact that GIS is available and you actually can explore the virtual place where you live or even the virtual place where you don't live. Um, it's possible to create a collaboration between a town, open source mappers and Wikipedians. What could we actually do with that? I'm hope I was hoping with, with this talk we'd actually find some people going, because we've talked about things like wiki universities. We've talked about, we've seen some of the projects that are running here and thinking that if only one of these projects has actually got um, people involved locally, then suddenly your impact of your project might actually be quite strong of saying, actually, I'm going to do this demonstration of this technology, and by the way, we're going to involve everybody in Loughborough, or we're going to involve everybody in Lenton Abbey to actually collaborate in that project. And to do that, you're not going to have to... You, I don't think you can, sending them on a GIS course is not going to work. If you tell them you're going to play with Wikipedia, then suddenly an, an open street map, suddenly they're going to be interested. Uh, and what are the other opportunities? So um, one thing that I'm going to talk about quickly is an idea that I've had, and I'm hoping there's someone in the room who'll dare to do it. So um, at the moment, OpenStreetMap does this thing where you get a link to a Wikipedia article. It has, thank you. Um, you, you can <laughs> you can basically you can basically um, <laughs> have a um, thank you have a um, a uh, point or an area or a line on OpenStreetMap. And you can link it to a Wikipedia article. You can, well, you can associate it with a Wikipedia article, but it doesn't really do anything at the moment. I'm wondering if there's a way of creating, how can I put this, um, a completely multilingual map of the world by using this QRpedia little redirect and Wikipedia and OpenStreetMap together. And I really would like to kind of use the next five minutes, unless you want to go, to kind of wonder if anybody has any ideas of how we can kind of link these big data sets together with maps and, and that sort of thing. <laughs> um, one thing I would always like to say is that it's not about the QR codes. It's about the geotagging. It's about having virtual reality. If you go around let, look, these places where they are you don't need a QR code, but suddenly it goes ping, 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 ping. I can see all this place, people can actually see it. We've got this, these are tags from um, Gibraltar, and we put NFC um, things in the back, so you can use a more mo mo mobile phone and scan it. So it's, it's, it's not an obsession about QR codes, it's about the ability to be able to do multilingual stuff. And as, as John's saying, we've built for ourselves little open street maps, and we've put a multilingual links on it, so we've got a map that doesn't reference language because it's, it's a picture and when you actually go and click on it, it talks to you in your language. And I think it's a pretty cool thing to be able to go and, go and, uh, and obtain. It would be a multilingual map where you just kind of go, I know you just arrived from China, I've no idea how to speak to you, but here is a map that you can talk to and you can talk to in your language. And it'll tell you not only about the, the name of, the, of Nottingham, but you can actually find out about Lenton Abbey and the Sheriff of Nottingham in your language. I think there'd be um, lots of interest in here in Nottingham in perhaps a contact with the uh, OSM people locally. The city council is very interested in opening up data and uh, sort of representing. Well, I'd be very interested. I live just on the road. <laughs> 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 Because some of the things that uh, we've, we've had is the fact that it's taken off a bit in the UK and then some of it's gone around the world, but we haven't actually, the UK has kind of gone, well, we don't mind, that's, that'll be enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can actually milk this thing more than once. Because it's, um, it might also be worth talking with uh, Casper at UCL that some of the stuff that they do in linking, uh, they've got some neat demos of linking, just sort of flat maps to VR applications to models in the 3D in the uh, this is the kind of well. I've only got I understand half your words yes okay <laughs> but, but if we
we're going to get down from the human beings all the way down yes. to this, this wonderful GIS model at the top, we need to have people it working at all the kind of levels in between them. So the thing they've been experimenting with that makes flat maps of how alive when you when you point a phone camera at it, you can see it in through a three D overlay. And yes. So yes. Like, they like some of their stuff. Yes. Yes. So that would be the so that is an approach as well. I think it's a wonderful opportunity because suddenly you'll find out that people are actually interested in that. And they'll go, wow. The linking thing, um, rather than doing it in uh, Wikipedia, it's kind of what DBpedia is to mm. design for, really, the, yeah. the data version of the Wikipedia information is kind of designed for that linking more at the meaningful object level yes. rather than rather than as, as pieces of text and Just make sure people understand DBpedia is the database version of Wikipedia. So if you're a computer, you actually talk to DBpedia. And we've just upgraded that to a thing called Wikidata, okay. which is... Um, even more, um, um, a relational model. So actually, every data. So if you put in the data, one of the problems we used to have was that people used to die in England, but they'd still be alive in Hungarian, and they'd still be alive in <laughs> Hungarian because it had been updated in one language, but it hadn't been updated in other languages. And obviously, a fact is a fact, and it's dead. Um, so we've now put the facts into a central place called Wikidata where all the images access it in the same way as we access all the photographs, essentially, and all the movies, essentially. 